everyone, today we're talking about how to prepare bank reconciliations and I'm your instructor Brandy. We prepare bank reconciliations when we get our bank statement and generally this is at the end of the month. We prepare bank reconciliations to make sure that there's no errors on our bank statement or in our books in our general ledger. We also prepare our bank reconciliations to calculate how much cash we have on hand in our bank account after all the outstanding items have been cleared. We also prepare a bank reconciliation in order to determine what items are not yet recorded in our books which need to be. So under the Y section here, there's two general categories. We have errors and then we have timing differences. There's going to be timing differences between our books and our bank statement. And the reason for that is when we write a check to a customer, we record the money as going out of our account as soon as we write that check. But the check needs to go through the mail and that can take a few days. So when the check actually comes out of our bank account, maybe a few days or even a week after we send the check out in the mail. These are called outstanding checks. Another timing difference would be a deposit. When the company receives a check at their office, they'll record it as being received into their bank account. The company then brings the check to the bank to get deposited, but if it's after hours or if it's late in the day, the bank might not get around to depositing that check into the customer's account for a day. In that case, there's going to be a timing difference between when we record the check in our books and when the bank records a check into our bank statement. And these are called deposits in transit. There are also items that we just don't know about until the end of the month. For example, an EFT or an electronic funds transfer. If someone is transferring funds into our bank account and not telling us about it, we might only learn about that transfer at the end of the month when we actually get our bank statement. This is not an error, we're just learning about it at the end of the month when we get our bank statement. Similarly, interest that's deposited into our account, or if we have a loan outstanding with that bank, interest that's taken out of our account. We're gonna learn about the amount of interest taken out or put into our account at the end of the month. The same thing holds true for bank charges. The bank deducts fees from our account once a month, but we're not going to learn about them until we actually get our bank statement. So let's go through an example of a bank reconciliation and this will make a little bit more sense. In an accounting class, when you're asked to make a bank reconciliation, you're generally given two things plus some additional information. The two things are a bank statement and your general ledger or a T account of your cash transactions. So what are the steps for doing a bank reconciliation? Step one is to identify your bank statement and your books. Now this might sound really silly, but a very common mistake on exams is that students mix up the bank statement and the company's books. So I actually just write above the bank statement and the books, which one is which. While I'm doing this, I also take a moment to identify on the bank statement what is coming into my account and what is going out of my account. Deposits mean that it's coming into my account Withdrawals mean that money is going out of my account. And we know on the books, a debit to cash means that we're adding cash because cash is an asset and credit means we're reducing our cash. So now that we've done that, we can go on to step two. Step two is to check off all matching transactions. And what I mean by that is to find transactions that are the same on the bank statement and the company's books. If the transaction has gone through the company's books, which means we've recorded it, and it's gone through the bank statement, so the bank has looked at it and said it's correct, then we can assume that the transaction is correct. So for example, from the bank statement, I have check 659 on my general ledger. I have check 659 and the amounts match. So I'm going to check those off as being the same. And I'm going to do that for all the transactions that match. Okay, so it looks like we've matched up all of the transactions that we can. The rest of the items are going to be things called reconciling items. And we'll deal with those on the actual bank reconciliation. So step three is going to be set up your template. And you can set up your bank reconciliation template the same way every time. And that way when an exam comes around, it's really easy to do. So at the top of our bank reconciliation, we're going to start with the company name. So in this case, Parker's Pet Emporium, we're going to put what it is. So a bank reconciliation, and we're going to put the date, the last day of the month or the, whichever day you're reconciling. So in this case, we can go to our bank statement. The last day is August 3rd. 31st. On one side we're going to have the bank and the other side we're going to have the books. It doesn't matter which side is which. On each side I'm going to start with my balance at August 31st and then I'm going to add and subtract things. So let's go back and grab our bank balance and our book balance. 
From here, you can see that our balance on the bank statement on August 31st is $31,227. The balance in our books, our general ledger, is $31,957. And you'll notice these are different numbers, and that's okay. They're different because of potential errors and also because of timing differences, which we're going to resolve. Step four in preparing your bank reconciliation is to look for any errors and correct them. So in real life, when you're preparing a bank reconciliation, you would have to go investigate mistakes that were happening. Because we're not working in an actual company and we're in magic textbook land, the problem will have to tell you if there's a mistake happening. So great places to look for mistakes is down in the additional information, or there might be a note beside an item on the bank statement or on the general ledger. So in our case, we can look at the additional information. The bank made an error when processing check number 660. The amount that should have been taken out of the bank account is $5,000. This will be corrected on the next bank statement. Okay, so in this case, the bank took $15,000 out of our account, but they should have only taken $5,000 out of our account. We need to add in $10,000 into our account to make it the correct number. So on my bank reconciliation, on the bank side, I'm going to add in that error of $10,000. So how you deal with errors is you reverse them where they happen. So in this case, the bank made an error. It was subtracting too much money from our account. So we're adding in the amount of the error. If the accountant made the error, we would be doing something similar, but on the book side. So now we've dealt with the error. We can check that off. And as well, we can check off those items, check 660 on both the bank and the books. By adding the $10,000, we are making those two items balance. And we don't see any other errors happening, so we can move on to step five. And step five is to adjust for timing differences. So any items that have not been checked off yet, that are not errors, are timing differences. And what we do with those is we simply flip them. And what I mean by that is that, for example, this $20,500 deposit on the bank statement that hasn't yet shown up on the books because we're just learning about it. It's an electronic funds transfer and we're just learning about it at the end of the month. So it hasn't been recorded in our books yet. We're going to flip it over to the books and record it there. So let's do that. We can go back and we can now check off this amount because we've dealt with it. Now let's deal with this $6,400 NSF check. An NSF check means that someone has sent us money, we've deposited it into the bank, but that customer did not have sufficient funds to pay us that amount, so the check bounced. We want to take that amount out of our books because it's coming out of our bank statement. So we're gonna flip it and take it out of our books as well. The next item down the list is a bank service charge coming out on August 15th for $130. It's coming out of the bank statement. We are going to flip it and take it out of our books. The next one is an automatic funds transfer coming out for $1,300. So we need to flip it and take it out of our book. We're now going to deal with interest coming into our account. It's coming into the bank account for $55. It's recorded on our bank statement. So we're going to flip it and put it on the books as also coming in. And now we've dealt with all the items on the bank statement. So let's go over to our books. Check, 60, check 661 has not gone through our bank statement yet, but it has been recorded on our books. This is because it's an outstanding check. It's recorded on our books, so we're gonna flip it and put it on our bank side. Check 663 is the same thing. It's an outstanding check. It's been recorded in our books, but it has not got to the supplier yet, so they haven't deposited it into their account, so it hasn't come out of our account yet. The last item we have to deal with is this deposit of $4,435. This was most likely deposited after the end of the day on August 31st, so it's going to hit the bank statement in the next period. It's getting added into our books. We've recorded it there, so we're going to flip it and add it into our bank and go on to step six. We're going to calculate the adjusted bank balance on our bank reconciliation. And this is the moment of truth. You get to see, does your adjusted balance per bank equal the adjusted balance per books? So for the bank, I got 44,000. 
$682. And for the books, I got the same thing. So that is a completed bank reconciliation. You'll notice that I'm putting a line between step six and step seven because the question might not ask you to do this. But step seven would be make journal entries from the bank reconciliation. So if we go back to our bank reconciliation and take a look here, all of the reconciling items on the bank side, we said are items that have been recorded in the books but need to be recorded on the bank statement at a later date. So if they've already been recorded, it doesn't make sense to record them again. The book side, however, the reconciling items are all items that have been recorded in the bank statement but have not yet been recorded in the books and that's why we were recording them on the book side. So in order for them to get into our accounting records, we have to now make journal entries to record them. So there should be a journal entry made for each item on the book side. All the journal entries are going to be at the end of the month, August 31st in our case, and all of the journal entries have to include cash. We are reconciling the cash account, so the journal entries are going to look like this. So electronic funds transfers coming in that have not yet been recorded on our books are generally for customers paying off their accounts receivable. So I'm going to put this debit cash, cash is coming in for 20,500 and credit to accounts receivable for 20,500. And we've dealt with that, so check it off. The next one is to record interest paid to us by the bank. Once again, cash is coming in, so I'm going to debit my cash for $55, and I'm going to credit interest income or interest revenue for $55. And you can check that off once you're all done. The next transaction I'm going to deal with is that NSF check for $6,400 coming out of my account. And again, an NSF check is when a customer tried to pay you by check, but they didn't have enough money in their account. So in this case, the customer still owes us money so we're going to increase their accounts receivable balance. So I'm going to debit accounts receivable for $6,400 and I'm going to credit cash. Cash is coming out of my account for $6,400. And once you're done with it, you can check mark it. The next transaction is to record the bank fee of $130 and I'm going to put that into an expense account and my credit is going to be to cash. Cash is decreasing because the bank took money out of my account. And once you're done, give it a check mark. The next transaction is an electronic funds transfer coming out of our account. In this case, I would assume that we have it set up to automatically pay our rent once a month. So our debit is going to be to rent expense for $1,300 and our credit is going to be to cash for $1,300. Once you're done, you can give that a check mark and you're all finished. You've now completed the bank reconciliation and you've recorded the journal entries that go along with the bank reconciliation. Thanks for watching everyone.